Muhammad Yunus's top quotes that inspire you to share. Muhammad Yunus, famous as Bangladeshi economist who won Nobel Peace Prize for founding the Grameen Bank and pioneering the concepts of microfinance. Born on June 28, 1940. Born in Chittagong. Founder, co-founder, Grameen Bank. Muhammad Yunus is a Bangladeshi economist, banker, and entrepreneur, known for his game-changing concepts in microfinance and microcredit. He is the founder of the Grameen Bank, for which he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The following are very inspiring quotes from this Nobel Peace Prize laureate from Bangladesh. Listed in, Intellectuals and Academics. Things are never as complicated as they seem. It is only our arrogance, that prompts us, to find unnecessarily complicated answers to simple problems. The fact that the poor, are alive is clear proof of their ability. Here we were talking about economic development, about investing billions of dollars in various programs, and I could see, it wasn't billions of dollars people needed right away. Poverty does not belong in civilized human society. Its proper place is in a museum. That's where it will be. Money begets money. If you don't have that, you wait around to be hired by somebody at the mercy of others. If you have that money in your hand, you desperately try to make the best use of it, and move ahead. And that's generating income for yourself. I was teaching in one of the universities while the country was suffering from a severe famine. People were dying of hunger, and I felt very helpless. As an economist, I had no tool in my toolbox to fix that kind of situation. I wanted to give money to people, like this woman, so that they would be free from the money lenders, to sell their product at the price which the markets gave them, which was much higher, than what the trader was giving them. I began my work in the 70s, teaching at a university in Bangladesh, and these economic theories that I had learned stopped ringing true for me, as I saw the misery of people living all around me. I have always said, that human beings are multidimensional beings. Their happiness comes from many sources, not, as our current economic framework assumes, just from making money. Credit markets were originally created to serve human needs, to provide businesses, and individuals with capital to start, or expand businesses, or fulfill other financial needs. The poor themselves can create a poverty-free world. All we have to do, 
is to free them from the chains that we have put around them. The Grameen Clinic's proof that a medical system for the poor can be almost entirely self-supporting, and we hope we can make it fully self-sufficient, so we can expand it across Bangladesh. If the basic structure of Grameen is changed, the worry is that the poor women, who are the rightful owners of the bank, will be disenfranchised. The challenge I set before anyone, who condemns private sector business is this, if you are a socially conscious person, why don't you run your business in a way that will help achieve social objectives? We prepare our students for jobs and careers, but we don't teach them to think as individuals about what kind of world they would create. The Grameen Bank Ordinance with amendments up to 2008 is a beautiful legal structure for the fulfillment of the ideals and objectives of the bank. Any change in this structure will be devastating for the bank. While technology is important, it's what we do with it that truly matters. The process of breaking down fear was always my greatest challenge, and it was made easier by the careful work and gentle voices of my female workers. One cannot but wonder how an environment can make people despair and sit idle. And then, by changing the conditions, one can transform the same people into matchless performers. In my experience, poor people are the world's greatest entrepreneurs. Every day, they must innovate in order to survive. They remain poor, because they do not have the opportunities, to turn their creativity into sustainable income. Making money is a happiness. And that's a great incentive. Making other people happy, is a super happiness. I thought, if you can become an angel for $27, it would be fun to do more of it. I began my career as an economics professor, but became frustrated, because the economic theories I taught in the classroom didn't have any meaning in the lives of poor people I saw all around me. I decided to turn away from the textbooks and discover the real life economics of a poor person's existence.
like navigation markings in unknown waters, definitions of poverty need to be distinctive, and unambiguous. A definition that is not precise is as bad as no definition at all. A university should not be an island, where academics attain higher, and higher levels of knowledge, without sharing any of this knowledge with its neighbors. I learned, that things are never as complicated as we imagine them to be. It is only our arrogance, which seeks to find complicated answers to simple problems. Unprecedented technological capabilities, combined with unlimited human creativity, have given us tremendous power, to take on intractable problems like poverty, unemployment, disease, and environmental degradation. Our challenge, is to translate this extraordinary potential into meaningful change. I founded Grameen to provide loans, to those considered traditionally unbankable. Grameen Bank works with the poorest, and often illiterate, providing uncollateralized microloans for tiny business enterprises, by which they can lift themselves, and their families out of poverty. My greatest challenge, has been to change the mindset of people. Mindsets play strange tricks on us. We see things the way our minds have instructed our eyes to see. We have designed a capitalist system wrong. We assume human beings are one-dimensional, all they do is make money, so we've created a money-centric world. I was born in 1940 in Hathazari, Chittagong, which is now part of Bangladesh. Education was always important to my parents, and with what little we had, they were able to provide an education for their children. Money commands everything, because that's our interpretation of capitalism. What kind of world is that? It's a very uncomfortable interpretation of a human being. We have been turned into robots. There are cultural issues everywhere, in Bangladesh, Latin America, Africa, wherever you go. But somehow, when we talk about cultural differences, we magnify those differences. Nothing is more valuable to people, than healthcare, and by paying, they feel less like beggars, and more like customers who can, and should demand quality care.
we developed microfinance to fight loan sharks, I was telling people don't go to loan sharks, not trying to take advantage, and make money for myself. I would be a junior loan shark if I did. It is not a panacea. Truly affordable but high quality health care tools and services are the only means by which quality health care can be provided to all. I had no idea that I would ever get involved with something like lending money to poor people given the circumstances in which I was working in Bangladesh. By simply capitalizing on core strengths and knowledge, companies and entrepreneurs can engage in an emerging business model that will enable them to create and demonstrate real, sustainable social impact in society. All human beings are born entrepreneurs. Some get a chance to unleash that capacity. Some never got the chance, never knew that he or she has that capacity. Access to quality education has enabled me to reach far beyond the Bangladeshi village I grew up in. The developing world is full of entrepreneurs and visionaries who with access to education, equity, and credit would play a key role in developing the economic situations in their countries. Business is a very beautiful mechanism to solve problems, but we never use it for that purpose. We only use it to make money. It satisfies our selfish interest, but not our collective interest. Poverty is an artificial, external imposition on a human being, it is not innate in a human being, and since it is external, it can be removed. It is just a question of doing it. Poverty, is the absence of all human rights. The frustrations, hostility, and anger generated by abject poverty, cannot sustain peace in any society. Today, the concept of business, is to make money. Making money, is the name of the business. I went to the bank, and proposed that they lend money to the poor people. The bankers almost fell over. They explained to me, 
that the bank cannot lend money to poor people, because these people are not creditworthy. Today, if you look at financial systems around the globe, more than half the population of the world, out of 6 billion people, more than 3 billion, do not qualify to take out a loan from a bank. This is a shame. I made a list of people who needed just a little bit of money. And when the list was complete, there were 42 names. The total amount of money they needed was $27. I was shocked. Good economic theory must give the people the chance to use their talents to build their own lives we must get away from the traditional route where the rich will do the business and the poor will depend on private or public charity what we are trying to do is to create a social business in Bangladesh, a joint venture to create restaurants for common people. Good, healthy food at affordable prices, so that people don't have to opt for food that is unhealthy, and unhygienic.